Okay, so I'm gonna show you first how I approach the strip molds, the decorative molds. So there's two different types. There's this strip, this long sort of trim, and then there's these irregular shape um, molds. These are both made in the same way. It's just they have different applications, which I'll show you later. What I've done is I've already sort of prepped uh, a mold that I'm gonna be pouring. How I made this was really just tinkering around. So I kind of tried a few different things to try to figure out what shape I wanted, what kind of uh, decoration I wanted. And this is just something I, I was playing with and it came to me. So um, these molds, um, I make all of them from clay. So I don't use any found objects or anything like that when I make these. And there's a few reasons for that. The first, is that um, it's a lot easier for me to just make what I want, the size I want, and the shape I want, rather than having to go out and like curate it by finding something in a thrift store or like a big box hardware store or something like that. It's just a lot more cost effective and time effective for me to do this. The other reason is I used to find things like let's say at a hardware store or something that were little decorative element. And I thought I was like so cool cause I'd find these things and I'd make molds of them and I could use them as like sprig molds or whatever. But then I'd like pick up a ceramics monthly and I'd look and I'd see that same ornament that somebody else was using. And so that was kind of a moment for me where I realized I need to make my own things that are my own kind of language and, the, and my, the kind of marks that I want to make in my work. So that's why I make all of these. And I don't use a direct reference. I really just look at a lot of ornamental things. I really like ornamental objects. I really like ornamental architecture. So I look at those kinds of things and they just kind of go into my head and get tumbled around and then they get spit out into this thing. So I've come up with this uh, just sort of by playing with clay. And so there's a pretty quick system that I can use to get these things so they're pretty symmetrical and all about the same size. What I did was when I made these individual elements, you can see there's one, two, three, four different parts to each one of these sections. So when I made these things, I was playing around with different shapes. As I was playing around and trying to come up with what this decorative strip was, I found this shape and realized I wanted to use it. So what I did was just balled it up and that gave me an example of how much clay I needed for each one of these. So if you start with the same amount of clay every time and you touch it the same way every time, it should be relatively the same size every time. That way I can get a pretty close approximation on the scale of these things. So after I had that, I was able to make as many of those as I have segments. So this is six segments. So that one's a little too big. I can take some clay away and the closer they are, the easier it's gonna be for me to make this consistent. So I'll take my time and make these as consistent as I can. So I'm just gonna do this really quick. Now that I have these six consistent balls, that'll be the six different segments, I could go ahead and just continue that with these other sizes so that I would have all the parts I need to make each of these. And if they're all consistent, I should have pretty consistent um, sections for this decorative freeze. So I have those here. So I'm just gonna show you how I made these. I like to think about these bits of ornament as made out of like pretty simple elements. You know, these are just, this part right here is really just a, a like kind of a, a cone shaped coil that I'm gonna flatten on one side in an arch shape. This is a really sort of a simple part, but the thing about these is after you layer them up, they look pretty complex and visually assertive, but they're really just simple elements. And I like to keep them simple. I don't usually carve these things out or um, layer them up too much. I think they work better as simple parts. That's the first part. I'm gonna make another sort of cone shape. And whatever I'm making, whatever this decorative strip looks like, I'll just make those parts, but it's usually just little cones or coils. And if it's not quite right, I can sort of remake it. Even though I'm gonna be making a mold out of this, I'm not too concerned about undercuts or anything like that because I can clean the mold up. This is just a really simple one part mold. So 
in that I have a lot of opportunity to flip that mold over and clean the clay out and then take care of all those undercuts with a razor blade or a fettling knife or something like that. So I'm really going to be working the clay to make this decorative strip, but then I'm going to be working the mold to make it workable for, um, so I can pull positives off of it. Now a few things I need to keep in mind while I'm making these is the, the depth that these are going to have. So I don't want this to be too thick or too deep because if it is I have to really pack a lot of clay in there and my wall of my pot's going to be really thick. So I have to make sure this is, has a pretty low profile. So if I see that it starts to get thicker than maybe like a quarter of an inch or so, um, I can take a bat or something like that and I can sort of give it a little tap and make this a little more shallow here. And then I could go back and reshape it like I have here. So I've already put a bat over this and tapped this down so it has a pretty low profile. And that's kind of what I got, so. So now that I have this, uh, I'm just gonna put a tool mark in here. And that's how I made that little mark here. This sample piece is finished now, and it's really as finished as it needs to get. There's a little bit of kind of like alligator skin, kind of like from when I was twisting it and it was drying out. There's a few little tool marks or thumb marks or something like that. I'm not too worried about that stuff because once this thing gets translated into a mold and then a positive gets pressed out of that thing and then it becomes a pot, all that stuff will go away. So I'm not gonna invest a lot of time in cleaning this up. I'll invest more time in cleaning up the mold and making sure the mold is right rather than this prototype. So I can set this where it, approximately where it goes and it becomes one more segment in this strip. Now to make sure that I'm gonna be building in layers like this with these coils. So I wanna make sure they're not wider on one end than the other because that can cause some problems uh, with the way I work. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I just take any sort of like straight edge. So I've got this level here and anything that rises kind of above this, I'm just gonna press it down um, and make sure that they're all consistent. And I can do the same on the bottom with maybe a ruler or something. So this, the segment I just put in, this sample that I made, is a little bit too wide, wider than the rest of this. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and press and sort of just give it a smush so that it's all the same width the whole way across. So this mold is now ready, or this prototype is now ready to be molded. Mm -hmm.